again? Sorry. Please go again. Hi. <laughs> you want to do one more time? <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> I want you to wear this tonight. It's stripped on my gown, so I will let you wear it tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> And see. Okay, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How about a wedding? <laughs> it is said the dark fate began with her. <laughs> Flag on the play. Oh, hello. I didn't know you were there. I think you're on her mark. I thought you were avoiding me, so I was like, what are you doing? What are you, what are you guys doing? I didn't know there was a camera you're young. Don't get married so quickly. To all the kingdoms far and wide, king and queen invite you to attend the wedding of their son Philip to Aurora in three days' time. All are welcome. Oh? It was just a very special moment and memory for me, and also it felt like a true wedding. Everybody was there the townspeople and the moor folk and the dark fae. There was a lot of people invited to my wedding. <laughs> There's a lot of people there. The wedding dress was so gorgeous. Flowers were on the train and also on my sleeves and those were like laser cut feathers. Tons of fabric. I mean, it was really long. I couldn't walk. I couldn't go anywhere without um, anybody holding it up for me. The dream come true. If you're like, I am wearing this. This is the Sleeping Beauty dress. I never wanted to take it off at all of the hair and, and the makeup. And also, I had pink in my hair as well that we put in. A little nod. So, <laughs> she's a little punk, I guess. <laughs> Looks better in green. Pink. You mean? I remember walking down the aisle that first time with Angelina, so it was very magical. The only way to make a person fly is there have to be multiple ways to fly. We did it with a combination of different things, tuning forks and then real practical, you know, flying with cables. The tuning fork, you know, basically two prongs. They fit either side of your body and you can twist someone backwards or forwards or side to side. Really, you can get a 360 degree movement. But you're clamped into it like you become a piece of the machine itself. And you're working with the, what I think of as puppet masters, because they're doing the up and the down and the spin, but your body is dictating whether you're turning left or right, and then they have to go with you. And sometimes you all go on a cue, and sometimes it goes terribly wrong. When we shot the battle scenes, there were a lot of singles and a lot of individual flying scenes, but there were also a number of occasions where they had upwards of four people flying at once. When you've got the combination of actors, all had different characteristics. You had to remember that, even though we were flying them all in the same equipment. It's for us to take the material after it's done and to try to choreograph the animation of the wings to work with the body performance that we have. That was a really important moment I know for Angelina and I know that she invested an enormous amount of time specifically to talk about the way that her wings would perform. The, the final scene of the movie is that in a lot of ways it echoes the final scene from the first movie. Um, the difference being now is that it's not Maleficent flying on her own, it's Maleficent flying with the next generation of Faye. Not only is the Maleficent world built practically, it's augmented through visual effects. You really feel like you're in the world and then the visual effects are enhancing that. Oftentimes in movie making, you'll make a patch of land about 20 feet by 20 feet, and then you'll create everything else with visual effects.
has her wings the entire time. They're all done with special effects. So if I was in a scene, we would have to always make room for the wings. We needed to make sure that we didn't have any of their wings interpenetrating. So if somebody was flying, they had to have 10 foot of space either side of them. In order to fit them into the frame, we quite often have to stagger them. So Lickspittle's laboratory is uh, right down in the basement of the castle. I knew that this lab had to feel as if I was kind of somehow connected to it. Everything that was put on that set, it's all there for a reason. The main sort of focus of Lickspittle's world is his workbench. The detail in the set was exquisite. Lickspittle had to adapt the laboratory to suit him. And so therefore this contraption was created that goes up to the height that he requires and then also slides back and forth. I thought it was gonna be a bit of movie magic, but it's just a guy called Terry who is off the set somewhere winding a big handle. <laughs> Nobody's allowed in here except me, and I'm already here. If you look more closely, you start to notice jars around the room and in those jars, are fairies, skeletons of fairies. and The missing of fairies. I think the set really feels like an extension of Lickspittle's character. <coughs> this is his world, his entire existence is in this, this one room. <gasps> Today there will be a wedding. Two kingdoms united at last. Godmother. Why don't you like Philip? He's human. I'm a human. And I have never held that against you. Welcome to our home. You can't stop the Maleficent is a threat. It's all coming together. No more fair. 